Hey guys, welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. In this uh, video, I want to show you how I edited uh, a landscape photo. And I will show you how I used the HDR toning, uh, but not to create that uh, oversaturated high contrast effect that you can see on a lot of um, photos out there. I don't really like that kind of effect. I will just use it to enhance a bit the dynamic range uh, of the photo. We will use a JPEG file, but uh, if you have a raw image, uh, that will be even better because uh, raw images have a higher dynamic range than uh, a JPEG file, so you can recover details from uh, shadows and highlights. And I'll also show you how I created the fake sun effect and well how to edit the foreground on the sky separately using some adjustment layers. Uh, I'll try to keep it uh, short because well um, I'm not going to go into uh, very deep explanations of uh, how adjustment layers work because I'll assume you already know the basics of uh, of this adjustment layers and on top of that is not going to be a difficult tutorial so uh, well that being said I uh, hope you will enjoy the tutorial and let's jump into it So here we are in Photoshop and this is the original image that I used. Um, this is a photo from Deposit Photos and as I said if you have a, a raw file uh, it's a lot better because you'll have a higher dynamic range and this is the result that we will achieve. I'll show you how I got this light effect here, how I created this and well how I created the whole effect on the image. So again the original and the final result. So uh, as you can see that just have a few layers on the uh, on the layers palette here. What I will do is open the image again. Uh, you can download this from my website. There's a link on the video description and also this if you click on the annotation uh, it will take you to my website where you can find a link to download this photo. And if you're a premium member you'll be able to download the PSD file as well. So uh, the first thing I want to do is unlock this because I will add I will use the HDR toning to add more light on the image. You can use levels, you can use curves if you want to, but with the HDR toning I got a uh, better result, I think. So the problem with HDR toning is that you cannot use smart objects or you cannot uh, have layers because as soon as you uh, enter the HDR toning it will flatten the image. So uh, for me the sky looks okay, I don't want to do anything to it. Well, I'll make some color adjustments to it later, but um, I want to have it here. So what I will do, I want to create a copy. If you duplicate the layer, as I said, with HDR turning, it will flatten it and uh, you will lose it. So what I will do is select everything with Control A and press Control uh, or Command C to copy it so, so that I have it there on the clipboard. And I will go to Image, Adjustments and choose HDR Toning. So you can see this match, uh, message here that will tell you it will flatten the document. So uh, here we have the HDR Toning panel. Uh, I will not use local adaptation even though you can do that if you want. Uh, but I, I don't know, I will not use it because I don't, don't really like this harsh effect that you get here. So what I will do is choose Exposure and Gamma. And here I'll increase the Exposure just a bit and also the Gamma just to add more light here on the image. As I said, you can use curves or you can use levels if you want to. But uh, I'll stick with this. And something like that. See the before and after. I'll click, well, actually, let me reduce this to 0.4. That looks a bit better. And I'll click OK. Now I have my image here, uh, which I'll name I'll Unlock It by pressing Alt and double click and choose HDR. And now press Ctrl Command V to paste the image that I copied on the clipboard. And I'll name this Original. Okay, now I have both layers here. I'll create a layer mask for the original and I'll get the radial. Um, the linear, sorry, gradient, black and white, and create a gradient like that, but I want to reverse it, just to have something like this. Now, we'll have to edit a bit this layer mask, so I'll use the brush tool with uh, an opacity of about 50 and 40, uh, something like that, um, and just paint with black on this layer mask to especially for this area right here, okay, right there, okay, um, you can see the effect, uh, okay, now the sky is okay, but we'll need to, as I said, to make some adjustments to it, 
So the first thing I, I will do is select the HDR layer and add in between these two layers, add a gradient map. Um, and I'll give you the color code that I have this uh, for this gradient. Now for the left part of the gradient, which is the shadows, uh, the black maps, this, well, the left side of the gradient maps, the shadows. So the color that I have for the shadows is 041827. Okay, so this dark blue. And for the highlights, I have another color and the code is D49, D69. So this sort of a bit of an unsaturated orange. Now the reason why I chose these colors is because this is a sunset and I wanna have this sort of golden look on the image. And I'll click okay. Let's hide this and change now the blend mode of this adjustment layer to vivid light. You could try soft, um, soft light or hard light or linear light even, but I liked vivid light. And I reduced the opacity of this to 11%. And what this does, And what this does is adds just a bit of contrast contrast and a bit of a golden tone to the image. The next thing that I added is a selective color above this gradient but below the original. So again, go to the adjustments icon and add a selective color adjustment. And I used this to change a bit the balance of color on the foreground here on the grass. And, and I used the reds and yellows especially um, I have a tutorial explaining how this selective color works. Uh, it works on opposite colors and stuff like that. So on the reds, I want to add more reds. Uh, that gives me this sort of orange tone on the highlights on the grass, see that? And if I increase the cyan, it kind of kills those um, orange highlights. So I want to add a bit of red on the reds. Maybe a bit of magenta, not too much because it starts to tint the image on this red tone and I don't want that. Of course yellow because I want this golden look and with the blacks I can make them darker or brighter. Uh, I will add them just, I will make them just a bit darker, not too much by increasing the amount of blacks on the reds. Now let's go to the yellows and do pretty much the same. Add a bit of, um, well actually the sign, I think I will leave it, well just minus six, just a touch of red. Uh, no magentas because this will start to make them look really weird and I don't want that. But I will add yellow of course. And you can see how this gives me this sort of nice look here on the grass from this to this. Okay, so I like this. Um, with the black, let's see what we can do. I don't want to make them too dark, just plus six. This will add, make them just a little darker. And the greens, even though we have grass and stuff like that, it will not affect too much. You can see I just bit parts of the green uh, of the grass here, so I'll probably decrease the amount of magenta. This will add more green on the greens, and uh, yellows and blues will not affect that, and neither does the black slider. So what's I will leave it like that. Um, Next, I'll move on the top layer, on the original, and I'll add another selective color here, but this time I'll clip it to the original layer, because if I, if I don't clip it, uh, all the changes that I will do here will affect these bottom layers, which I don't want. So I'll right-click and choose Create Clipping Mask. And here I will work again with the reds, yellows, and also with the cyans and blues, because the reds and yellows is because I want to change a bit the tones here on the clouds and the cyan and blues is for this part here which have some blue tones on them and this part here as well. So I'll start with the reds. Uh, again, I want to add more red. See that if I add cyan, it becomes green, which is not nice. Uh, probably I will not add magenta because it will start to look red. I'll add just a bit of green by adding negative values on the magenta, which adds greens. And on the yellows, I want to add yellows, of course, to make the sky look more warmer. And maybe just a little darker. Go with the yellows and I don't want to add cyans by any means, so I'll 
use negative values to add red on the yellows, which will, will make them look a bit more orange. Magenta, just a touch, plus eight. And here, well, it depends on what you like. You can add more blue by adding negative values on the yellows, or you can add more yellows, which is I, what I will do. And with the blacks, let's see, I don't wanna make them too black, something like that. Now let's move on to cyans and blues. Um, this will not affect us too much. Uh, let's see here, uh, no, the greens, no. This part here, just a little on the left top side, but uh, let's leave the greens as they are. Let's move to the cyans and blues. I wanna add more cyan to the cyans, more magenta to make this part darker, less yellow this will add more blue on the sands and maybe a bit darker see how it makes it darker something like that and again with the blues uh, more cyan a bit more magenta to make them even darker uh, and less yellows and more black uh, be careful with this uh, extreme changes because sometimes uh, you can see it here I don't know if you can see it on video but it starts um, you'll get artifacts and stuff like that if you make really dramatic changes here so be careful with that and take a, a good look to the image once you've done with this um, so well, we already got a nice effect here um, you can also use gradients, uh, like a solid gradient, uh, black to transparent, and I'll change the black color to, let's say, this tone of blue, and the transparent part to this tone of orange. Click OK and change the angle to kind of have a different tone on the sky, and now if I change this to soft light, for example, uh, you can see the kind of effect we get. I actually like it. Let's decrease the opacity to about 40. It um, strengthens a bit the tone of blue there. That's why I added. Let's try overlay. Yeah, looks nice. Multiply I think will be too extreme. Yep, it doesn't work. Let's leave it on overlay. Now if you want to create that sort of glow of light that I had there on the original, this thing here, um, you can do that with uh, using gradients. Um, so I'll create another gradient, a solid gradient. And this is a non-destructive way of creating sunlight, well, sun and glows of light. And we will choose black to transparent. Let's, uh, well, reverse it and, well, it doesn't work. Let's leave it like it is. On this part, we will add white. And on this other side, we will add black. This black part here will help us use the screen blend mode, so you will see that in a second. And the white part is the pure whites. Uh, we will leave them white and we will add another point here. Don't worry, we can change this uh, after we're done, but just add this three points here that we will add next. And we will use a color, a yellow color like this. And here we will add a dark tone of orange. Something like that, really saturated. Click OK, and now change the style to radial. In fact, I already have a tutorial uh, showing you how I created this kind of suns with this. And you can see we have this white dot here, and we can make it something like that. Oops, let's delete that and move this slightly to the right, like so, and maybe change the color of this to something a bit more like this. Click OK and click OK. Now these parts here are pure black. So if I change now the blend mode to screen, you will see they will go away and I, I'm left with this glow of light here. Now I cannot move it. For that you have to uh, do not rasterize it. And just double click on the gradient. And when you have this panel here, you can now move this around wherever you want. I wanna put it here. I want that white dot to be here. Okay, it's too dark, so uh, it's too, oops. Oh man, it's too big, sorry. So what I'll have to do is move this a bit towards the left to make it smaller. And this more towards the left and maybe change a bit the tone. I want something a bit more red, like so. And now I'll move, I'll click okay and move this just a bit higher up and click OK. Now, this effect is too extreme, at least for my taste. So what I will do is use this this um, gray, um, this layer mask, sorry, to kind of mask a bit um, 
the effect and the uh, the way I will mask it is using the image itself the image it itself will work as a mask and for that we need to go to image first select layer mask go to image and choose apply image and here leave the channel to RGB let the layer set to merge and you can check you can change the blend mode you can try I don't know hard light or other blend modes or subtract and you can see how the layer mask changes here you can also try the invert option but I like the multiply I like how this works and I'll uncheck preview so you can see the before and after you can see now the the, the effect looks a bit more natural at least to my taste you can also try using um, one of the layers as a mask so I could try layer one to add to work as a mask or another uh, any other of these layers here but I will uncheck that and click OK and if the effect is still too strong what you can do let me show the the mask this is the mask if you press the alt and click the alt can click on the thumbnail of the mask you will show the mask on full screen if the effect is still too strong you can select the layer mask and press Control command L this will bring up the levels and you can increase the contrast on the mask and you can see how it becomes darker and the effect becomes less and less visible Okay, see that before and after, and you will see the difference without the oops without the layer mask and with the layer mask, and now without the effect at all. It kind of looks better to me. Now you can change this, um, can change the tones of this. That's why I said this is non-destructive. So you can change the colors of this uh, gradient. You can change the size of it. Um, let's say I want it like this, and I can change the scale. To make it almost the whole image okay so this is the effect before and after and now the last touch uh, the image already looks nice but if you want a sort of a stronger effect a stronger sunset effect you can create a stamp by pressing shift alt command and e or if you're on a pc it's shift alt control and e or you can also press control command a then go to edit copy merged and then go to edit paste and you will get a new layer like the one I have here and now change the blend mode of this layer to multiply and you can see the strong effect here that this has so I'll drop the opacity to about 29 or 30 percent or 40 percent depending on how you like it and while this is uh, the final effect let me take a snapshot of this and then unhide well hide the rest of the layers and deactivate the layer mask and take another snapshot and show you the before and I, I the before and after original and with the effects and well remember this is just a, a JPEG file if you have a raw file you will get probably even better results so uh, this is how I edited this landscape photo I hope you liked uh, the tutorial I'm Andre and see you on my next tutorial